Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. And today I'm diving into a recent study published in the Journal of Nutrition by Eric Helms and his colleagues that looks at one of the most talked about topics in physique sports, and that is carbohydrate loading during peak week. So if you've ever wondered whether those final days of carb manipulation before stepping on stage really make you look fuller, leaner, and more defined, then this video is for you. This research team set out to test whether a typical bodybuilding style carb load could really change muscle thickness or overall appearance in lean, diety men preparing for competition. So let's get into some background. As most of you know, in bodybuilding, the final week before a show, which is often referred to as peak week, is all about manipulating training and your nutrition to leave you looking your absolute best. One of the most common strategies we use is something called carb loading, which involves athletes entering the final week with low carbohydrate or muscle glycogen stores, then dramatically increasing their intake just before competition. So the logic is simple. Fill up the muscles stored glycogen, and for every gram of glycogen stored, the body stores roughly three grams of water inside the muscle. Theoretically, that should make muscles look fuller and more defined on stage. But despite being a widely used strategy by athletes, there's surprisingly very little scientific evidence showing how effective these tactics actually are. So that's exactly what this study set out to examine. So the purpose of the study was to evaluate how real world bodybuilding carb loading protocols affect body mass, skin fold thickness, and muscle thickness, all key indicators of how full or flat an athlete's physique might appear. So to test this question, the researchers recruited four male participants between the ages of 26 and 40. All of them were lean, resistance trained who had been dieting for about eight weeks, which closely mimics the physiological state of a competitive physique athlete during the final weeks of a contest preparation. Now, none of the participants had ever used anabolic steroids and had skin fold sums below 48 millimeters, which is roughly equivalent to the average for natural bodybuilders during peak week. The study used a double blind randomized crossover design, meaning each participant completed both the carb loading condition and the placebo condition, but in a different order, separated by a nine day washout period. Each experimental phase lasted five days and included three primary testing time points, baseline, post depletion and post loading. So let me explain this with a little more detail. At the start of each phase, participants began a three day depletion period. During this time, they followed a standardized low carbohydrate diet, providing about one or two grams of carbohydrate per kilogram of body weight per day, alongside a moderate protein and low fat. For example, if the male was 180 pounds, this would equate to approximately 81 to 163 grams of carbohydrate. The diet was tightly controlled to ensure consistent food choices and fluid and electrolyte intake. Participants also performed a standardized resistance training routine throughout these three days, which included their typical upper and lower body exercises performed in the 10 to 20 rep range, leaving one or two reps in reserve. Importantly, the researchers avoided exercises with heavy eccentric loading or long muscle lengths to minimize muscle damage. After the three day carbohydrate depletion phase, participants rested on day four, which attempts to imitate the tapering that physique athletes often perform before competition to promote glycogen restoration and reduce inflammation. During this rest day, the participants maintained their depletion diet. Again, that was one to two grams of carbohydrate per kilogram body weight, but consumed one of two specialized drinks, depending on the condition. In the carbohydrate loading condition, they ingested maltodextrin beverages, providing nine grams of carbohydrate per kilogram of body weight. So if we use the same example of our 180 pound male, this would mean their carbohydrate intake increased to approximately 734 grams prior to the post loading testing. In the placebo condition, they consumed flavor and texture matched beverages containing guar gum, but no carbohydrate. Both drinks were prepared by a researcher not involved in the data collection to maintain the blinding, and the study design was counterbalanced to control for any order effects. Measurements were taken in the morning following an overnight fast, and always within one hour of the same time of day to minimize diurnal variation. The researchers measured body mass, skin fold thickness, and muscle thickness at each testing session. Body mass was recorded using a scale, while skin folds were assessed at eight sites, including the triceps, subscap, biceps, iliac crest, supraspinale, mid-abdomen, front thigh, and the calf. 
for muscle thickness, ultrasound scans were performed at multiple sites across the arms and legs, including both the anterior and posterior regions of the thigh and upper arm, as well as the calf. Three scans were taken at each site, and the average of those measurements was used for analysis. Interestingly, the authors summed the means for these different sites to create one total muscle thickness value. Now, before we dive into the results, if you're ready to train smarter, not harder, check out my evidence-based training programs. They're designed for all experience levels with unique muscle building focuses, built-in volume tracking and exercise demonstrations. And for just $12.99, you honestly can't go wrong. To download your next training program, visit beabody.com and start your evidence-based training program today. Now let's get back to the video. So let's take a look at the results. What did the researchers find? Well, after the three day depletion phase, all of the participants showed small decreases in body mass, skin fold thickness, and muscle thickness, which is exactly what you'd expect when glycogen stores and corresponding total body water levels are reduced. On average, body mass dropped by about half a percent in both the carbohydrate and placebo conditions. Skin fold thickness decreased by roughly 3% in the carb condition and muscle thickness declined by about 0.8% across both trials. In other words, after the depletion phase, everybody looked a little bit flatter, as would typically happen during the early part of a peak week. The interesting part came after the loading day. When the athletes consumed high carbohydrate beverages, roughly nine grams of carbs per kilogram of total body weight, their body mass increased by about 0.8% from post depletion to post loading. Muscle thickness increased by approximately 2.9% and skin folds rose slightly by around 1%. These numbers indicate that after refueling with carbohydrate, the muscles appeared fuller and total body mass rebounded, suggesting glycogen and water had been restored inside the muscle tissue. In contrast, the placebo condition told a different story. Without carbohydrates, there was no significant rebound in muscle thickness or body mass. In fact, body mass continued to decrease slightly by about half a percent and muscle thickness remained essentially unchanged. Now, when comparing everything back to the baseline measurements, the carb loading condition still came out slightly ahead. On average, body mass was up by about 0.3%, muscle thickness was up by just over 2%, and skin fold thickness was actually down by about 2% compared to where participants started. Meanwhile, in the placebo condition, body mass dropped by almost 1%, skin folds decreased only slightly, and muscle thickness declined by about 0.8% overall. So while the changes in the carbohydrate condition were small, they did consistently move in the direction that physique athletes are generally aiming for. Slightly heavier, slightly fuller muscles, and slightly leaner skin folds. The authors did caution, however, that the magnitude of these changes might not be large enough to exceed normal daily variation or measurement error. That means while these trends suggest some benefit from carb loading, they may not necessarily translate into visually obvious changes on stage or in photos. And finally, it's worth noting that individual responses varied quite a bit. Some participants experienced no noticeable increases in muscle thickness and body mass, while others showed only minimal changes. And this was even observed for some subjects in the placebo group. This variability highlights that not everybody responds the same way to carbohydrate loading, and that personalization may be the key to getting the best results. So what do these results mean for you? Overall, the study does suggest that a bodybuilding style carb loading protocol after several days of depletion can lead to a small measurable increase in muscle thickness and body weight. And those changes align with what we'd expect physiologically. When glycogen levels are restored and water follows in the muscle, it gives that slightly fuller look that competitors are often chasing during peak week. Now, before you rush to load up on nine grams of carbohydrate per kilogram of body weight before your next show or photo shoot, it's really important to interpret these results with caution. First of all, this study only included four male participants, which is a very small sample size too small to make broad conclusions. This means these findings should be viewed as preliminary or exploratory. Also, just to be clear, if you're a female athlete tuning in, I have never in more than two decades of prepping athletes used this type of carb loading approach. It's especially not suited for bikini or fitness categories, which generally don't favor a full carb loaded appearance. Another key limitation is the timing of the testing. It appears the participants trained on day zero, one, 
two and three of the protocol with no true rest day before the ultrasound and the anthropometry measurements. That's not typical in most physique sports science studies, where researchers usually include at least one full day of rest before scanning. The reason we typically do this is because training, even performed at moderate intensity, can temporarily affect things like muscle thickness, hydration, and inflammation, all which can influence ultrasound readings. So it's possible that some of the changes observed here weren't solely due to glycogen replenishment, but may have been influenced by these residual training effects like localized swelling or even shifts in fluid balance from the previous workouts. This means that while the carbohydrate loading condition showed trends towards greater muscle fullness and slightly higher body mass, we can't say with absolute confidence that these effects were purely the result of glycogen restoration. And with such a small group of subjects, individual differences play a huge role. What worked well for one person might have had little effect on another. So what are our key takeaways? Well, carbohydrate loading may help enhance the appearance in some athletes, but it's not a one-size-fits-all solution, and these results don't guarantee that you'll see a visible difference. The smartest approach is to test your own peak week strategy well in advance of your competition or at a practice show to see how well you respond. Experiment with different loading amounts and show day strategies and pay close attention to how your physique responds. I recommend taking photos in the morning and late afternoon to mirror how most shows are structured. Then make adjustments based on your own results, not on popular trends or old school traditions. I've personally made major changes to my own peak week approach in recent years and it looks quite a bit different from what I used to do. So in summary, this is one of the first controlled studies to test a realistic men's bodybuilding carb loading protocol using modern precise measurements like ultrasound. The researchers found small but consistent increases in muscle thickness and body mass after loading without major changes in skin faults. While these results support the physiological rationale behind carb loading, the actual magnitude of change appears modest. So the best approach is to fine tune these methods during practice runs before competition to understand your unique results. That's it for today's breakdown, guys. If you found this review helpful, please be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss future deep dives into the latest nutrition and training science.